Dr. Lester Sumrall presents the World Harvest School of Continuous Learning. It is a World Video University of Teaching, presenting Truth on Fire. It is a school of pertinent truth, meeting today's demands and tomorrow's challenges. The World Harvest School of Continuous Learning is anchored to the rock and geared to the stars. We seek to obey Christ's command to go ye therefore and teach all nations. World Harvest School of Continuous Learning is a dynamic outreach ministry of the Lassie Broadcasting Network. You can enroll in this unique school and study in the comfort of your own home or attend classes at any of our campuses around the world. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. The program you are about to see is one of many from a dynamic group of studies exploring the untapped resources of prayer. These lessons are in-depth studies of the therapeutic and supernatural powers of prayer. Together, we will study methods of prayer proven to be effective for the believer and disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, Dr. Lester Sumrall, speaking on the power that unlocks the treasures of God, prayer. Lord, listen to your children praying. It's my joy to welcome you to our study and to invite you to this very special series on, on prayer. I trust that you have... Uh, I've been uh, following them very closely because we have now done uh, many of these and we trust that they are, are our blessing to you. I believe in prayer. I believe that God answers prayer. I believe that it is profitable to pray. And I believe that you and I should be people of prayer and that if we will pray that God will certainly answer our prayers. In this tremendous list of uh, studies that we have been giving you, uh, we have now come to lesson 19, what and who to pray for. And back of this is 18 lessons on prayer, possibly more about prayer than you've ever known before. And I trust that above all, it'll teach you to learn to pray and to love to pray. Prayer is a joy. Prayer is a fulfillment. And I hope that God will bless you as we pray. Our lesson today is very long, so shall we get right into it together? Beginning with James chapter 4 and verse 3, the epistle of James, I'd like to read to you regarding what and who to pray for. The Bible says in James 4 and 3, ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that, it, that you may consume it upon your own lusts. And so we are told here that it is possible to ask and not receive when you don't pray for the right thing. And so we should give a lot of attention to what we pray for and who we pray for. And if we will do that, our prayers will certainly be answered. It was in Luke's Gospel, chapter 11 and verse 1, where the disciples said, Lord, Master, Teach us to pray. Teach us what to pray for. Teach us who to pray for. Who should we pray for? I believe that number one, in Psalm 2 and 8, it says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen, which is the nations. I'll give thee the nations for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Maybe we don't pray that prayer as strong as we should, that we should say, God, I pray I pray for the nations of the world. God said, I'll give them to you for inheritance, spiritual inheritance. Say, they're mine by the blessing of God and the power of God. He says, I'll give you the uttermost parts of the earth for a possession. Uh, what, what a great thing to pray for and to pray about. In the New Testament, in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, the Word of God says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, by supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks, be made for all men. For all men. That's the totality, the totality of prayer. For all men. Sometimes we don't go far enough with our prayers. 
We say, oh, God bless America. <laughs> I bless Japan. I bless the Philippines. I bless Europe. I bless Africa. But the Bible specifically says to pray for all men. And if we will do that, God will certainly bless us in our prayer. What and who should we pray for? I would say you should pray for your nation, whatever nation you might live in. Pray for your nation. Your nation needs prayer. Nations rise and fall many times because either the lack of prayer, our prayer was not prayed sufficiently strong to get the job done that needed to be done. Pray for our nation. And that, that's big. <laughs> Moses prayed for a whole nation. God, through prayer, was able to deliver a nation. And he was the great deliverer that walked right out in front and, and, and caused that nation to go free. It's, it may seem big to some of us to pray for a whole nation, but God wants us to pray. And we even have songs in our country that says, God bless America, land that I love. That is a, that's a prayer. And we hope that each day, each one of us will not forget to pray for America. Sometimes the stars and stripes are lonely. Nobody's praying. And maybe you feel the same about your flag, and it needs prayer. Pray for our nation that God will grant them peace, that God will grant mercy upon the nation. We should specifically pray for people in authority. Uh, we read that in 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 4, where God says to pray for all of those in authority. Now, this is a command. <laughs> We're not uh, told... Uh, whether we like it or don't like it or feel like it or don't feel like it, this is a command. Pray for those in authority. And so we have an obligation from God to pray for those who are in authority. And if God has elevated a person to a position, then you're supposed to pray for him. And so let's pray for those in authority. Pray for our presidents and pray for those in Congress and pray for those that are governors and our mayors. Pray for them uh, because the Bible says to pray for those who are in authority. Also, you can come closer to home. You can pray for your city. Uh, we have great cities in our land that certainly need prayer. And it might be that you're in a city right now that the devil is just taking it over, that he's putting his smut and his mess everywhere, that his immoralities, he puts it up and down the streets. He starts his adult movies with the, with the, with the dregs of filth inside of them, enticing people to go inside and indulge in the filths of it. And, and uh, you need to pray for your own city. That is a good thing to pray for. It was the Lord Jesus Christ who prayed over Jerusalem. He prayed over Jerusalem and he wept over Jerusalem. Not many of our cities have anybody weeping over them. Anybody crying and saying, God, save my city. And you have a right to do that. The people of Nineveh prayed for their city. Oh, God, save our city. And God saved that city and all those that were in it because the people prayed. And so you can pray for your city. And your city uh, might need prayer that nobody else was, is capable of doing. I mean, you might be the one that God is depending upon to pray for your city. And so pray, please, and believe God that he will bless your city. You can bring that even to a smaller area and pray for your family. Now, there are so many families that need prayer, and many families are torn to pieces because nobody prays. Nobody, nobody seeks God for them. Families are held together by prayer. The family that prays together stays together. And so, you need to pray for a family. It can be your own family, or it can be someone else's family, and we, we don't know. But you need to pray for families. Families need prayer. And the Word of God we find in many instances. Well, there's Abraham praying for the family of Lot, pouring out his soul for that family, that God would save that family. We need to pray for our families. Pray for my family, and I'll pray for your family. <laughs> Let's get this business of praying for families. What and who to pray for? You know, some people don't know what to pray for. They'll say, I don't know how to pray, what to pray. That's what this lesson's all about. And if you write it all down, you will certainly know who you can pray for and how you can pray for them. 
You say, well, what can I pray for? You can pray for protection from your adversaries. You can, you can pray for protection. Uh, Jacob prayed for protection. He says, oh, God, I thank you that when I was sleeping out in the open that you protected me, that you kept me and uh, from my adversaries, from wild beasts or, or any, anyone. You can, you can pray for your adversaries and our protection from them. That I know that every day we ought to say, God, keep us from the evil one and God, keep us from evil people. That there are wicked people in the world today that would destroy me, that would destroy you, that would kill if they had an opportunity. They are full of the devil. And so we need to say, God, give us protection from adversaries, from those that would hurt us, from those that would harm us, from those that would do, do despite to us. We pray that you will protect us from them. Now, you have a right to pray that prayer for protection that God can give you. You can pray that over your family. Lord, as we go out, protect us from adversaries that hate us. And God will certainly hear you. And God will certainly bless you. Then it's good to pray for those uh, who, who work for Jesus, those that are in Christ's service. And in Matthew's gospel, chapter 37, it says, Then saith he to, unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye. I see this is a command. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. So we are to pray for laborers, for God. Pray for missionaries. Pray for pastors. Pray for all kinds of Sunday school teachers and deacons and elders. Let us pray for workers in the service of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is imperative that you and I have a burden for those uh, who are carrying the, the, you know, the burden of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some are carrying too much of the burden and someone needs to at least lift it by prayer saying, oh God, bless that one, we pray. And if there are not enough ministers around, Sunday school teachers around, the Bible says that you should pray. The harvest is plenteous. The harvest has always been plenteous. It's the laborers that are few. It's the laborers that are few. And may the Lord reach down into your heart, into my heart, and to be sure that we are properly laborers unto the Lord. You know, that we are properly laborers unto the Lord. These are things that you can pray for. People you can pray for, conditions you can pray for. God wants you to be a person of prayer. Now, you can pray for things. Elijah was a man that prayed for rain. Now, not many people do that. I guess in, in drought areas they do. But Elijah was a man that prayed for rain, and God gave rain. Now, if God did it for Elijah, God can do it anywhere. He can do it anywhere. God can make rain. He's a rainmaker. And so if, the, if there's a great need, like a rain in your area, you have a right to be an Elijah and say, Lord, I, I ask for it to rain. The crops need rain. Lord, the ground needs rain. Let the rain come and cry out to God. And through crying out to him, there will come victory. There will come blessing. There will come help. There will come anointing. God will do it. And so you have a right to pray for that. Elisha. Uh, prayed for a very strange thing. A young preacher lost the head of, off of his axe, an axe head. It fell down into the Jordan River. And he was a poor kid, and he had borrowed the axe. <laughs> Nothing like dilemmas, you know. And he ran up to the big preacher and says, Oh, big preacher, prophet, I, I, I borrowed an axe. The head came off, and the iron went down into the Jordan there. And no doubt in the bottom of Jordan there's mud, and down in the mud it went. We won't ever find it. And says, what am I going to tell the man I borrowed it from? Preachers are always borrowing things. And sometimes they break. And sometimes it's embarrassing. But Elijah, Elisha says, I'll help you. Where did it go down? And he showed him. And he went. And there he prayed. Now, you see, that's, that's an unusual prayer. He says, axe head, I command you to come up right now. By the power of God. By the power of God. I release you to come up. And up out of the murky muddy waters of Jordan there came an iron axe head gurgling and spewing as it came and when he got to the top he said to the young preacher grab it and he grabbed it and he put it back on the handle and, uh, and away he went rejoicing now that's a strange kind of a prayer but God is trying to show you that there are all kinds of things you can pray for in the Bible 
The Bible teaches us to pray without ceasing. And there's so many things we can pray for, we can stay real busy. Here's a prayer for another person's dilemma. You know, a, a boy that with a broken heart, he'd borrowed this thing and he didn't have any money and he'd lost it. And now he's going to have the embarrassment of going back and say, I've lost it. And he saved the occasion by prayer. He didn't put on a scuba outfit and dive down there and start looking for it in the mud. He just prayed. And God answered that prayer. Now, you can pray for spiritual things. You can pray for people to be healed. God will answer that prayer. You can pray for people to be delivered uh, from, from demon power. Jesus did. He cast out devils. And you can pray for people to be set free. You say, well, how could I ever do a thing like that? If you act like it's a big job, it gets big. If you keep it very simple and just say, Lord Jesus, you're the captain of our salvation and you have all power and you have more power than the devil has. So I command in your name for this person to be free. And it's simple. And then you say, come out with a good, strong voice. And it has to obey because you belong to Jesus, because you belong to Jesus. And so you can pray for people to be, to be saved. You can pray for people to be healed. You can pray for people to be free from demon power. You can pray for persons. God wants you to pray for persons. I can hear some of you say, you know, uh, Brother, Brother Sumrall, in our area, there's some of the meanest people in the world. Did you know that you can pray for wicked men to cease? You can pray for wicked men to cease. And God is calling upon you right now to pray. To pray and say, Lord, stop the wickedness in that person. Stop the wickedness in that person. Stop it, Lord. In Jesus' name, I, I commit it to God. Stop it in Jesus' name. You can pray for wicked men to cease. They'll either get right or move away. There are many cases where God's people prayed until sinners moved out of town. They couldn't stand it any longer. They got so miserable, they just moved away. Prayer is the greatest arm of the Christian church. It is the greatest strength of a person of a Christian, and God wants you to be a man, a woman, or a young person of prayer, to stick in there, get it done in Jesus' name. Won't you do it? Won't you do it? What to pray for? Who to pray for? God gives us all kinds of situations that you can pray for. Uh, King Hezekiah prayed for himself. He prayed for himself. A preacher came in and said, you're going to die. Going to die right now. Set your house in order. He didn't want to die. He wanted to be king. He turned his face to the wall and said, Say, Lord, I love you. I'm serving you. How about some more years? The Lord heard his prayer and said, Yeah, I'll give you 15 more. God heard his prayer. He prayed for himself. If we could teach people to do that, if we could teach you to do that, some people, as soon as they have a problem, they call the pastor right away. They can't get a hold of the pastor to get the assistant. Can't get the assistant to get the Sunday school superintendent. Can't get the Sunday school superintendent to get the teacher. And they just keep him working right down to the janitor. You know, they've got to have help from somebody, you see. And why don't you learn that you can pray for yourself? Here's a man that he was told he was going to die. He didn't call for everybody to pray with him and to pray for him. He turned his head to the wall and he said, God, hear me. And you can do the same thing. You can pray for yourself. And God answers prayers for you. God heard. You can join others in prayer. The people of Nineveh, the people of Nineveh all prayed together for God to save their city. And many times when you have an Easter service, Christmas service, and the whole community gets together, it's good to join them. It's good to join them and, 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 and pray together with others. You say, Brother Sumrall, who in the Bible prayed and were successful at it? Well, in the Bible, there were priests that prayed. God answered their prayers. In the Bible, there were widows that prayed. And God answered their prayers. And, and so if you're a widow, God answers prayers. God will answer your prayers. I know he will. There were slaves in the Bible that prayed, and God answered their prayers. Did you know that Daniel lived and died a slave in Babylon? He wasn't a free man. Did you know Joseph in Egypt lived and died a slave in Egypt? Uh, he, he wasn't a free man. And, and so slaves prayed, and, and God answered their prayers. God will answer your prayers. Did you know that army officers prayed? Sometimes you say, man, that fellow's in the, in the Air Force, the Army, and the Marines, he is tough. <laughs> uh, our Army officers prayed like Cornelius, and God answered his prayers. God did a mighty thing for him, brought salvation to his whole house, 
brought the Holy Spirit into his heart. God answered his prayers. He prayed. So it doesn't matter whether you're a banker or a lawyer or whoever, whatever you are, you can pray. You can pray. You can pray. Or you might be a humble person working in the open like a fisherman or like a shepherd. That doesn't make any difference. You can be a farmer. Whatever you are, you can pray and God answers prayer. Who can pray? You can pray. <laughs> you may be a housewife and you may say, oh, there's not much to me. I can't do much. Yes, you can. You can pray and change things. Housewives have helped change worlds. Housewives have helped change cities. Housewives have changed homes. Housewives have changed children by the power of God. They've changed husbands by the power of God. I urge you in Jesus' name to be a praying person, to pray, and that God will answer your prayers. I know that he will answer your prayers. In the Bible, the shepherds prayed. Shepherds were men of prayer and prayed, and God heard their prayers. David was a shepherd. God heard his prayers. And on through the Bible, some of the prophets were shepherds, and, and God heard them. And, and God answers the prayers of, of working, laboring, sweating people. God hears their prayers. And uh, fishermen prayed, as you know. <laughs> Peter was a fisherman. And others that were fisher people in the Bible prayed. And God heard and answered their prayers. So look at yourself at this moment and say, where do I fit into this thing? Who am I? What am I? And how can I pray? I wish for you to know that you can pray for your children, you can pray for your neighbors, you can pray for your relatives, your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, you can pray for people, you can pray for your community, you can pray for your church, you can pray for your pastor, you can pray uh, for your own community there, your own city, you can pray for our nation. The whole scope of prayer is open before you. You can reach out and pray for missionaries, some of them going through hard times, difficult times, trying times, discouraging times. You can reach out and say, God, bless our missionaries, bless our missionaries, and God will bless those missionaries. You can pray for, pray for uh, Sunday school teachers. There are tens of thousands of Sunday school teachers in America. Sometimes they get discouraged. Sometimes they get sad. Uh, they, they need your love. They need your love. They need your blessing. And so don't forget to pray for them. So when we look through the, the whole realm of possibilities, everywhere you look, there's an opportunity for you to pray. But our text, when you read that, says ye ask or you pray and you receive not because ye ask amiss. If you're going to pray for foolishness, Lord, give me a new suit. The Lord said, what you going to do with the five suits you got already? Lord, give me a new dress. What you going to do with the ten dresses you got already? A Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me. The Lord says, I'm tired of you talking about me. He says that ye ask and you receive not because ye ask amiss. That is, you ask in foolishness. That is, you ask uh, when you don't need it. And he says that ye may consume it upon your own desires, upon your own desires. Now, he says, don't ask that way. But... The other way, ask for the world. Don't be afraid. Say, God, save this world. Save my generation. Send revival to the world. You can do that. God will answer your prayers. He says, ask for the heathen. Ask for the heathen. That's the nation. That's everybody except Israel. Ask for the heathen to be your inheritance. They belong to you. They're yours. He says, ask for the uttermost parts of the earth. Tibet the islands of the sea, Antarctica. Ask for the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. No, you may never step on it. No. But you can see God come there and bless and save because of the prayers that you pray. And when God's kingdom comes to this earth, that might be the area that he'll make you the governor over during that thousand years reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. All of us will have positions in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I urge you to learn in your own prayer life what you can pray for, who you can pray for, and let's do it not only every day, every hour of the day. Let's look through the category of those that need prayer and say, oh, thank God for the opportunity and for the privilege of prayer. I hope this in a small way teaches you what to pray for and who you can pray for. This, the, the door is open. Go after them in Jesus' name. May I bless you. Father, I thank you 
for the privilege of prayer. I thank you that I can pray for my neighbor watching me right now. I thank you that you do answer prayer this moment. Let the Spirit of the Lord come and the power of Jesus come this moment and set them free. We believe you for the miracle of God. Let it be done right now. I thank you for this great deliverance. Let it be done in Jesus' name. Teach us to pray. Teach us who to pray for. Teach us, teach us what to pray for. And teach us to pray in the will of God. And that's very significant, in the will of God. Now, neighbor, we want to ask you that if you don't know the Lord, if you're not sure of your salvation, if you're not positive that you're saved, that this is the direct moment to do it right now. All you have to do is to obey uh, 1 John 1 and 9. The Bible says, if we will confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if you right now will say, Lord, I'm sorry of my sins, God will forgive you, God will cleanse you, and God will make you a new person in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you look up and say, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Why don't you do it right now? If you wish to enjoy this, uh, this, this teaching further, uh, you may do so. Uh, here's the videotape for it, three-quarter inch. You can attach this to your own television set, play it in your own home to your neighbors, your friends, or to a prayer meeting group. All these lessons are available in that way. Also, uh, you can study these lessons from audio tape. You can take the little tape. This has two lessons on it. The audio tape has two lessons. When you order this one, order it by what and who to pray for, teaching you how to pray. Uh, what and who to pray for. And we trust that you will, will get it. There'll be two lessons on it, the one you order plus a second one. And for these two lessons, it is only $2. We trust that you will, uh, $5, excuse me. The two lessons are for $5. We trust that you will receive your, yours. Will you do that right now? Also, uh, you can order a teaching syllabus which has 20 outlines of lessons on prayer. I believe in prayer, and there are 20 lessons in I believe in prayer. Won't you uh, just sit down right now and say, I'm interested in this. You can also join our World Harvest School of Continuous Learning. We can give you examinations on all the lessons that you learn, and we will issue to you, if you pass your grades, a certificate for all the lessons that you study. So join in, and let's learn the Word of God together. And also, be a part of this great teaching ministry. Pray for it every day and ask the Lord to make you a partner in it. You could be a win a million partner along with me. It's only 50 cents a day, only $15 a week. Won't you please become a win a million partner? Do it right now. Let me hear from you. If you enjoy these lessons, tell us about it. We're waiting to hear from you. And until we do, God love you and we love you. Thank you. Today's teaching on prayer has been recorded on audio cassette for your convenience of listening at home, work, or in your car. You can obtain a list and order form of all Dr. Sumrall's teachings on audio cassette by writing to Dr. Lester Sumrall at Post Office Box 12, South Bend, Indiana, 46624. The production of today's teaching was sponsored by... I Believe in Prayer was produced through the facilities of the LaCie Broadcasting Network.